Good afternoon. I will talk without um, without microphone because I'm Italian and I really need to move my hands while I'm talking, so I cannot <laughs> definitely hold a microphone. Anyway, um, uh, thanks for the organization of uh, the TEDx. Today I will uh, talk about information visualization, and I will talk about this because if you're that's an word. Yeah, if you're TED lovers and you've seen a lot of TED talks, you've probably seen this. This is Aaron Koblin talking about data and information visualization and his project with STEM and design. And or probably have seen this TED talk. This is uh, David McCandless. He's talking about it's a very nice speech and he's talking about how information can be beautiful. Or maybe you remember this. This is Gapminder by Hans Rosling and is a data visualization platform that shows data about the world. If you don't remember uh, Gapminder, I'm sure you can remember Hans Rosling because he was very famous to be the one that swallowed a sword at TED Talks. So don't worry, I'm not gonna swallow a sword today, <laughs> but uh, the reason why I'm talking about them is that they are all part of the same community. This is a map designed by Moritz Stefaner a couple of months ago and he uh, designed a map of all the Twitter accounts related to information visualization. There are 1,645 Twitter accounts that talk about information visualization. And the big one are the very famous people. I'm somewhere in the middle, I'm a little circle up there, Gaia Sky, you can see, very small. Um, and I'm there not because I'm a famous designer or I'm particularly good in this topic, but because I've been researching on this topic since a long time ago, and at the beginning there weren't 1,645 people with a Twitter account working in this. We were a lot less people, and we had a passion for data and information visualization. Uh, so now, of course, in the last five years, this topic became huge, and everybody started designing information and data visualization. Uh, now you can find a map or a chart or a flow chart for, for everything. There's a map for um, expat and how expat like a country uh, where they live. Thailand, as you can see, is core very high uh, because a lot of expat like Thailand, me included. Uh, but there's really a chart or a diagram for everything. There's a chart about the name of Ninja Turtles and how they're gonna uh, recognize as a Renaissance artist or a Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so uh, in the last five years, a lot of people started designing uh, diagram and charts and map. And this they became huge, it became almost an addiction. Uh, everyone from mm, journalists, for example, this is a map come from New York Times, politician, but even graffiti artists start doing information visualization. This is a cut out and you can customize and uh, spray information visualization. And I must say, I was addicted as well. It's not that I was impermeable to that addiction at all. Uh, before coming to Thailand and going to MIT, I was working with Density Design Lab, that is a research lab for the Politecnico di Milano. And we were doing teaching and researching and pro uh, project on information visualization. We've done a lot of different projects together. Uh, some of them became very famous. They got published in Dataflow, for example. This project is the visualization of a research report about academic research on design in Italy. And actually won a very famous prize called, called the Golden Compass just this year. And it, we designed a visualization of it. Or this was a book, a research report, but we also designed software. Like this is City Murmur. We presented it at SIGGRAPH uh, some years ago in New Orleans. And it's a platform that visualizes and distorts the map of the city related to the number of online news you have on that city. Uh, so today I'm not going to talk about our, my project and the project I have done during my life. You can find them online, they are everywhere. Uh, but what I want to talk is about what I'm researching. That is not very much about how to design information visualization, and everybody speaks about how important information visualization is, but I'm going to talk about why and how information visualization became that big in the last five years. There's plenty of reason, plenty of forces that have shaped this res recent interest in the topic, and they come from very different disciplines, and I will try to make sense of them. 
So for, for sure, the first important things was scientific visualization. This is a project done by Ben Fry uh, about the DNA. Uh, science and research procedure in the last years has become very uh, data rich. Uh, with the sequences of the DNA, we got a lot of data, a lot, big, big data sets that needs tool, computational tool, to be visualized and managed. And the same happened with network science and complexity science. When you deal with networks of people, you have a high number of elements connecting with the complexity of relationship. And so you need some tools in order to make sense. You cannot go through the Excel table and understand what's going on there. You really need tools. So of course, science was requiring tools and designers provide answers. So in 2001, Ben Fry and Casey Reyes from MIT uh, designed a computational language called Processing. Uh, it actually has a new release in this year. And and that was, processing wasn't alone, of course. Uh, processing is a computational language that is at the base of the majority of information visualization projects. Together with processing, there was many eyes done by uh, IBM, or uh, there was Protovis, Flare, a lot of tools that allow you to upload your data and visualize. Uh, but you are uh, hearing me talking about data a lot, and you're probably wondering why, where does data come from? Where do we get data from? And this is the second important thing that happened in the last five years that is called open data uh, movement or philosophy. That is the idea that the big data sets should be open and free. And this idea uh, has been supported by a lot of institutions, including the federal government of the United States and a lot of other governments that decided to open their database to the public in order to be visualized, used, and managed. And together with this kind of project, this is data.gov, there were other projects done by a group of people interested in the topic. For example, OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap provides free and open uh, geographical data to everybody, differently than Google. Google is not free and open. OpenStreetMap is free and open, and you can download and use the data. But this idea of sharing data were not only done by people interested in the topic. It became really an addiction, and everybody wanted to share their personal data. And they were supported by a lot of little software platform or website, like this one. It's called Datum, in which you could trace your everyday life. You can count how many cigarettes you smoke, if you smoke, how many times you go to this, the cinema, and you can trace and visualize the data about your personal life. There are plenty of them. This is Datum, there's your flowing data, there was bad posts that were tracking uh, sex activities, so you can see if you're increasing or decreasing. <laughs> and <laughs> there were a lot of them, and people really loved them, because there's this, at this attitude in which people start sharing their data. When you use Foursquare, maybe some of you is now checking in here, you are actually sharing location data in real time. So there's a big personal, uh, data sharing. And all these factors participate in the development of information visualization. This is why in the last five years, uh, a lot of people start working in this field. And we were not anymore 10 or 100, but there are 1,645 Twitter accounts. So not counting people outside Twitter. But this is the past. Uh, this is the research I've done to understand which were the factors that brings us here. But the question is, what about the future? What information visualization will provide in the future? And I might be wrong. Every prediction could be wrong. Don't take me too serious. Uh, but I, may, I will make a hypothesis of where information visualization can bring us in the future. So for sure, one of the first uh, place where information visualization, or discipline where information visualization can help is journalism. As you probably uh, know, journalism and press is going through a very difficult time due to the digital age, but data-driven journalism, this is what it's called, is a very powerful tool. Visualization is a very powerful tool to engage reader and bring them back to reading news. Of course, New York, the New York Times saw very uh, well this potential and is now working a lot of information visualization, but this is the place where uh, journalism is the discipline where information visualization for, for sure can create great value. But it's not the only one. Uh, there, of course, will be developed uh, some software products, application, uh, for, that are based on information visualization. 
Here you see a map designed by the New York Times that was, was showing the density of a taxi cab in New York. And it became an iPhone application that tells you in which corner you, can, you have more possibility to get a cab. That seems to be impossible in New York City, given that you need an iPhone application. And so product and services could be the next step for information visualization. And then, of course, one of the most obvious, urban planning. If you have a software or visualization software that can help you managing the data coming from traffic, pedestrian, public transportation, of course, your urban planner can plan a better city. And then there's the last one. That is also one on the, one, the one I'm more interested in and will also raise a very big question. That is the application of information visualization to social science or what is called humanities. There's a lot of project in what is called digital humanities now, and all those projects ra uh, raise the same question. That is, what happened? If I talk about information visualization and I'm talking about quantity, is easy. Visualizing data that are quantity, it can be done very easily. But what about quality? So, for example, if I design a network, if there are many software in Facebook that design little social graph about your network. So they connect individual little dots with lines, that is the relationship between two persons. But that line doesn't say anything about your relationship. It doesn't say if it's thick, if it's long-term relationship, if it's, it doesn't, it loses the, the nature of their relationship. I always make another example. That is, if I want to visualize, for example, the map of how people are scared uh, of earthquake or natural disaster, I can go and ask people, how much are you scared about of an earthquake, for example, from zero to five? And they will probably answer, oh, I'm scared 3.5. But what does it mean to be scared 3.5? <laughs> you know, it, fear is not something you can quantify. So what happened when we are talking about quality? How do we visualize quality? I don't have an answer. I only have the question. So <laughs> no, no answer for that. But I want to conclude the talk with a critique and also a hope for the future. Um, when I moved to MIT, uh, I left the Polytechnic after my PhD and I went to MIT. And I didn't work in information visualization for some time. And I did it because I was very frustrated. And I wasn't alone. There was with me for sure Phil Gifford that designed this infographics. And I was very frustrated because the percentage of those information visualization with added nothing but simple graphic and color were a lot. That means that there's a lot of projects out there that actually show more the ability of the designer or show you knowledge that you already have. You already know what is there. You just see it nicely visualized. But I'm a very deep, uh, very, um, yes, deep believer in the power of information visualization. And not only because it's synthetic. So it has the power of uh, synthesize a complex system in one single visualization and make it understandable. Not only because, of course, it's engaging. Everybody loves visualization. You get mesmerized by things that move. But, and this is what I really, really believe, is because it's enlightening and have the power of revealing knowledge that you don't have before, didn't have from before. So this is the hope for the future that as us as a designer or everybody out there will put a lot more effort in designing visualization that instead of showing what we already know can unveil and reveal the unknown. Thank you.